Hey, what's up guys? Tim here. So got a uh, slightly different kind of knife review for you today. This is a kind of double feature, if you will, of two really great knives uh, designed by an awesome maker and uh, manufactured by a um, good maker, a good manufacturer. You know, they've had their ups and downs. But um, yeah, as you can see, this is uh, the Boker Quaken uh, series. Uh, I've got the two different models here. This is the first one that came out. This is the second one. And I want to do a bit of a comparison and review of these two knives. Um, they're essentially, you know, the same knife, slightly different. But uh, I've really enjoyed carrying and owning these knives. So I figured I'd, um, yeah, share with you guys my thoughts and opinions. So let's um, start with the first one that came out. So um, there's been quite a few reviews of this knife already. Um, there's been a lot of knife, I guess, you, uh, pimpers or modifiers out there that have been uh, modding these knives and this one in particular has been modified by uh, Alex Dietz of Dietz Knives and um, so yeah you can tell because of the flipper tab um, so the cha the only changes that I had done to this knife were um, obviously the flipper mod I had the blade uh, acid stone washed which looks really beautiful now the liners and hardware have all been bronzed yep and so as the the pocket clip has been um, you know, acid stone washed. Oh, and I had a uh, Alex put a titanium backspacer in there for me. So um, that's the only real changes that have been done to it. Oh, and he modded, he changed the detent too, which is um, something we can discuss in a second. So this was a great knife um, out of box. The only problem, major problem with it was the the detent. The detent was way too strong on this first version. And um, people complained that the thumb disc was too small and they couldn't get at it. Um, yes, it was, but not really. Because if the detent is tuned properly, you don't need um, a huge thumb disc to deploy the knife. Um, because Lucas Burnley's custom version has the exact same thumb disc, right? So you don't need a huge thumb disc to do it. It's The problem was that uh, the detent was too strong. And I can attest to that too, because when I got this out of box it was nearly impossible to open one-handed but now with the detent modded you know it's no problem you just kind of uh, dig your finger in there and uh, just pop it out right and um, overall this knife uh, out of box was great aside from the detent um, yeah I really like, like this design I mean the design does come from uh, Lucas Burnley a uh, American some lint on my hand some uh, American knife maker uh, works out of, uh, I believe it works out of New Mexico. Um, anyways, um, yeah, this is his interpretation of the, uh, Japanese, uh, Quaken, which is a derivative, derivative of the Japanese word Kaiken, which was a, a very short dagger that, um, samurai of the Bushido age carried for self-defense because, um, you know, obviously the katana, and even the shorter uh, intermediate wakazashi was too long to use indoors. Um, this would be ideal for, you know, if you were, you know, indoors and you needed a self-defense weapon. Um, so, the, yeah, that's, this is kind of his interpretation of that. And it's really cool. You know, if you got that, um, I guess it's like a drop point blade, but it's slightly modified to be it's much more elongated. Comes to a very fine tip. And uh, it's got that belly for, you know, sharpening. Or, I mean, cutting. And um, there's a slight swedge here too. Uh, these production versions have OS8 steel, which is um, you know not the craziest steel out there, but it'll get the job done for EDC. And uh, overall, I really like the profile of this knife because it has everything that I like in an EDC knife. It's slim, compact, disappears in your pocket, and um, it's very versatile. You know, you have that bit of belly for slicing and cutting. You have the tip for any detail work you need to do. And um, overall, you know, just a great, great knife. And just the profile itself, I mean, if you compare it to even just like, you know, a regular average ballpoint pen, it's just a little bit thicker than a pen, right? In terms of, you know, just looking at it from this side. But um, to me, that that's pretty cool to have that amount of knife uh, in your pocket in that kind of slim profile. So now getting to the second iteration of this knife this is the flipper version the official flipper version obviously this can be flipped but it was that's because it was modified so this uh this titanium version it has um yeah titanium handle slabs a slightly different pocket clip 
and of course this is a flipper only no thumb disc on this and uh, so you can see the uh, kind of shark fin looking flipper tab there this has been carried so you can see there's some rub marks especially here bumping up against my phone not a big deal I might even stone wash these scales just for fun um, overall awesome knife has the same blade shape and um, this one has not been modified at all so you can see the um, really nice stone wash that if I can get the camera to focus the really nice stone wash that Boker has put on there we go you can see the stone wash there and the uh, the titanium handle slabs have a it's almost like a it's not a sandblast because it's not gritty like the Chris Reeve uh, Sebenza's so like definitely maybe some sort of bead blast and it has an almost like an eggshell finish which is pretty nice it's um it's quite smooth and um, overall, yeah, ergonomics are about the same, um, but it doesn't have the uh, kind of choil like here because this, you know, this has a cutout for your finger. And I kind of like this uh, grip a bit better because I rest my thumb on the thumb disc and my index goes in here, so I get a much more secure grip. That's not to say, you know, it's it's not uncomfortable or insecure, but um, it does feel a bit different. So now, because this version has titanium handle slabs, it is heavier. Uh, substantially, uh, well, not not substantial, but it's noticeably heavier um, when you hold it in your hand. And I think also because it feels heavy because it's of its slim profile, but it's weighty. So it's in fact a very dense knife to hold in your hand. And um, that's not you know necessarily a bad thing. It's not to the point where it's heavy to the point where it's um, not manageable, but it is a little heavier than the Micarta version. Um, yeah, both are running on IKBS. Both are very smooth. I have taken both of these, these apart, and the what's interesting is that this titanium version has um, more ball bearings around the pivot, the IKBS uh, pivot, than the Micarta version. Um, I believe this one had about 12 on each side, and the titanium version had 20 on each side, which is pretty interesting. Uh, pocket clip, same shape, but it does have this sort of split arrow like those Benchmade clips. Um, this is a clip design that Lucas Burnley uses on his customs as well. And um, there's uh, this area around the pivot, I mean the pocket clip. It's interesting because it's been milled out. So um, that's pretty cool. So the, the pocket clip sits kind of flush in there. Pretty nice. And of course lanyard hole. But I don't, I don't think, um, I, I think these, this design looks best without a lanyard on it. Just because um, it's such a minimalist design and anything more on that would... Uh, kind of ruin those aesthetics but that's just for me of course so overall uh two really great knives um now if you're on the fence about getting which one uh hmm it's a little tough i like both um if i had to choose one though i think oh, it's a really tough one but just slightly i would choose this one because i like having that option of um opening my knife slowly or you know just popping it out and of course i have been a third option because of the mod, I can flip it. But um, and for some reason, um, my my Carter version is much smoother than my the uh, titanium handled version. Still, both are still very smooth, but it doesn't um, doesn't really shake shut as well as that one. But um, yeah, overall, two really great knives. Um, you know, Boker is kind of hit or miss, but I do think that this titanium version uh, out of box was perfect. It didn't need any um, mods or changes to make it better. And um, oh, some people have uh, complained about the shape of this flipper, and they're saying it's backwards. Whereas, see how this part is kind of convex, I guess you could say, and this is concave. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, they're saying it should be flipped because when you pull push on this part, people are saying their fingers are slipping off or whatever. Um, I think that's because for some reason people, some people were saying you should push button this. And the problem with that is if I push button flip this, see what happens is my finger gets in the way of the tang and then it, it stops it from opening. But um, if you pull back on it, like the light switch, see it opens no problem. You know, I've never had any problem opening it that way. So yeah, what I would recommend when, uh, you know, deploying this knife is pulling back on it like a light switch. And that is... Um, I think that's what works for me. So, um, yeah, overall, two really great knives from Boker. Uh, I don't know about the current generation of the Micarta version. There was a 
orange, um, I think that was a Blade, ex a Blade HQ exclusive version, and it had a larger thumb disc, and some of them were coming pre-modded. Um, but if you do get this one, I'm not sure if they've changed the detent at all. Um, maybe they have. It w would be nice if they did. But um, this is still a great knife uh, regardless. And if you do get one, you may have to send it off to get someone to mod it for you. But I think it's worth the investment because if you're into uh, Lucas Burnley's designs and so, sort of um, more, you know, simple, no-nonsense, uh, minimal designs, this is a really great knife for that. And I think it's a great EDC. Um, due to the build quality, I would classify it as, you know, light to medium EDC chores, you know, nothing heavy duty, but I think for most of us who, uh, you know, live the more kind of urban lifestyle or uh, live in the city, um, this would be more than adequate. All right. So, um, I think that's everything I have to say. And if you guys have any comments or questions, uh, please leave them down below. I'd be happy to you know, have a conversation with you guys. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time.